we'll come back to this big mama here in a second but this is the Plymouth uh, fender here the Plymouth and the Model A are at another garage my wife uh, is pregnant and she thinks that she's more important than the car so she's got to pull her car or yeah she's more important so she's got to pull her car in here and uh, keep it in the garage for the winter so she's not all cold in the morning it's not all frosted up um, so with that being said I'm pulling parts off of the cars and bringing them back here so I can fix them how's that so I'm working on this fender and it's obviously a, a freaking mess this guy um, obviously was hit here and he from what it looked like I thought he used a ball peen hammer at first but um, looking at the other side I saw like almost like weld marks so I'm thinking he used one of those stud puller deals you know zap it boom and um, I don't know he just did a really horrible job at it and I, I don't really know I mean it was painted over like that so I don't I don't know what he was trying to do but uh, if you look at it like this you can see that whole area is low all in there and when you come over here, um, let's see if I can get it to do it. Come on. There it goes. See this whole thing's tinning? And out, out I think is correct. So it keeps wanting to go boom, back in. And when it comes out, you know, now, I mean, you know, when it pops out, there, I'm sure there's still some hot, real high spots, high spots and this and that and the other, but um, I think out, is, is where I need to start. So I've been whacking it here on the high areas, right there in that big high area. And from the back side on in this in this area here, trying to get it to, to stay up there, but um, no dice. In between, I've been using the shrink disc to hit the, this real high spot here and then here. I've just been going over this whole area with it. And then I kind of broke the golden rule here, but I've been using this um, this uh, damp rag here and the reason being why I was doing that is because I I needed to know I was getting it hot enough and I, I wanted to wipe it and see that that steam um, and then I use the hammer and dolly again which I don't know if I'm using the correct one or not I don't know I don't you know shrinking stretching whatever the hell so <clears throat> I've been doing that you know making sure that it's getting hot enough Hopefully it's shrinking because what I'm what I'm thinking is this is a lot of metal here, you know, in here, and it, I want that to kind of go back in, and maybe it'll pop this back up. Um, I don't know, you know, I don't know. I could be completely wrong. So I'm trying to get to start. That's my starting point. Once I can get it to to stay up, then I can start working all that out, and then move forward, work on this here and that line and this and that. Um, you know, it's a lot of trouble to go through, but these fenders are um, impossible to find. Mopar people are absolutely insane and they think all their shit's gold. So um, if you ever notice these cars, um, especially ones that have some rot, the first place that goes on these fenders is right here. If you watch the movie Christine or whatever, you can see it's, it's rotted all the way back, you know. So these fenders are actually really good. Um, there's no rust. I pulled it off and I was very surprised, but I pulled it off and there's, you know, all of the structure in here isn't rusted. Um, just surface rust. This here is an open. Oh, hold on, let me get the camera on. This here is an opening where it slides into a bolt. Um, it's all marred up and stuff, but that's not a rust hole. That's just you know. And then uh, you know, all up in there is just surface rust and all that, uh, which is actually more than I could say you know for the Ford. The Ford was rusted more than this. So um, I'm happy with it. I you know if I can figure this out then uh, we'll be good to go. The other, the driver's side fender is, you know, perfect. Uh, well, not perfect, I'll have to do body work on it, but nothing, uh, you know, nowhere near this. So, trying to figure that out. Um, and that fan, I got that fan from my brother-in-law. And the camera doesn't really do it justice, I mean, but, you know, you can see it compared to that shop vac. Uh, that was from a warehouse. They put like a 100 foot sock on it. Actually, that one's brand new, they're on pallets, but. They, they had like socks on them and they would you know spread air throughout the warehouse or whatever and uh, he gave he gave that to me and actually gave me two of them uh, one <clears throat> is going to my dad and then I'm gonna keep this one but uh, my idea is to set it up to where it'll uh, vent uh, 
you know, when I'm painting the Plymouth. Uh, it might even be overkill, it might be too much, I don't know. But as sure as hell, there's not gonna be any any uh, material floating around in that place. Cause this, uh, from what he was saying, these things are uh, pretty crazy and you could tell that it is. I'm gonna have to build, they're, they're set up to be mounted on the ceiling. I'm gonna have to build like a, a stand for it or something. And I'm gonna try, I'm gonna redo that cage. Cause I got kids and you know, I, I want it smaller um, than that. So, uh, you know, absolutely no fear of uh, hands or fingers or whatever getting chopped off. So, but <clears throat> that's what I'm doing. Um, I'll, uh, I'll leave it at that and then get back to it. So, uh, <coughs> as I always say, I'll try to make more videos, but you know, who knows? So we'll see you guys.